So what is the purpose of actually putting antimicrobials in your clothing? We've heard about antibacterial soaps and other things that are out there, but really what's the deal? So what is the purpose of actually putting antimicrobials in your clothes? So the way antimicrobials in textiles work is similar to other types of functional finishes. They might either be embedded into the textile itself during the manufacturing process or applied as a finish afterwards. However, there is a difference with how antimicrobials work as opposed to other types of finishing agents. Think of antimicrobials in textiles as serving this function for textiles that can't routinely be laundered. Think of antimicrobials in textiles as serving this function for textiles that can't routinely be laundered. Think of antimicrobials in textiles as serving this function. Just keep throwing them in the washing machine. That's not only not eco-friendly, it actually has its own challenges for certain types of textiles that can't be thrown in the washing machine easily. Say curtains, carpets, uh, different types of textiles that you just can't toss in and out of the laundry machine. Sometimes they need to embed in these textiles different types of components that are meant to prevent the overgrowth of bacteria because once bacteria start to overgrow, on these textiles, they can one, start to break the textile down and affect its integrity over time. Two, they can actually transmit disease. This means they can serve as a fomite where they can actually transmit bacteria, fungi, and viruses from person to person or bacteria that get embedded into textiles can actually produce odor and that can be a real problem over time if you can't routinely clean these. Now this field of antimicrobials in textiles is really a new field and it's something that we're starting to learn more about and there's very few studies out there that have really looked into what they mean for our skin. I'll go over the studies that are available but it's worth understanding why this even matters. Our skin is our first line of defense against the environment we have immune cells in our skin that are surveilling the environment to protect us from environmental insults. Consider the fact that most of your body surface area at some point during the day or night is going to come into contact with textiles in one form or another, whether it be carpets, whether it be your clothing, whether it be your bed linens, towels that you wipe off with. All of these surfaces are potential fomites that can serve to transmit bacteria, fungi, viruses from person to person, so we need to understand what that means. We also know that our skin inherently has its own microbiome, which is its own slew of microorganisms, bacteria, fungi, and yeast that actually live on our skin and serve their own commensal function, meaning they're part of our anatomy. Our skin maintains an acidic pH to make it less favorable for different organisms to overgrow. So as we study textiles and their interaction with our skin, we need to one, make sure that it doesn't impact negatively our skin's innate ability to protect itself. And two, we need to consider ways that we can further help our skin and protect it further from environmental insults almost as a form of second skin. There are a variety of bacteria that normally live on our skin. And the thing to understand about this is that some of these bacteria cause disease and others do not. Some of these bacteria may be involved in various skin conditions based on an imbalance that you might experience over time. However, addressing these in the right way and to keep a balance in these bacteria is essential. Over cleaning your skin and over cleaning your clothes is not necessarily going to serve you a long term benefit because drying your skin out from excessive skin washing has also been shown to have its own negative impact on your skin. Actually, a study that showed that Staphylococcus and Enterococcus, which are found in healthcare environments as well, and forms that can be resistant to multiple antibiotics such as MRSA and BRE have actually been shown to transmit through the uniforms of hospital workers from person to person. There was one study I came across that showed that it was not only necessary to decontaminate the clothing, they also had to consider treating the washing machine. There are widely variable laundering practices out there that we need to do a better job of understanding the best way to clean our clothing to reduce the transmission of disease potentially through this environment. One of the other challenges with just laundering clothing is it's not going to be a long lasting effect. 
Another study confirmed that within three hours of wearing decontaminated clothing, they were already starting to recontaminate. Another study confirmed that within three hours of wearing decontaminated clothing, they were already starting to recontaminate. Another study confirmed. Now, when I study antimicrobial textiles, I find it useful to put them into three main categories. The first category is leaching versus non leaching antimicrobials. Now, this is important because, again, and this is what differentiates antimicrobial finishes from other types of textile finishes you might come across. The story behind leaching versus non-leaching is some antimicrobials are embedded into textiles in such a way that their goal is either to directly kill off microorganisms or just prevent their spread on the garment. But the commonly used antimicrobials out there are what we refer to as leaching antimicrobials. This means that those antimicrobials are in the textile, but they're not really bound to the textile. So that when they come into contact with an organism, they might be released from the fabric to actually kill off the microorganism. In doing so, bear in mind, this might mean that your garments are less antimicrobial over time because it's losing some of that antimicrobial finish based on the environment it's in. Also bear in mind that because those leaching antimicrobials are not covalently bound to the textile, during the process of laundering, they might come out of the clothing item. When you purchase an item that has claims for antimicrobial finishes, you need to be really thoughtful to follow the guidelines offered by the clothing for best practices for laundering and maintenance of that garment. Again, there's no ingredient label on these clothing items. You may not always know what the finish is or if it's leaching or non-leaching, but you can gain a sense of it based on if they say you can actually use this 15 times or wash under certain circumstances. But the laundering practices should at least indicate best practices to maintain that antimicrobial finish as long as possible. It may not be forever and that needs to be understood so that when you purchase an item, it might not maintain that long term. However, there should be some guideline on the fabric that tells you how many times you can wash it to retain that finish in its best shape possible. The second, second category for antimicrobial finishes is that they're either biostatic or biocidal. This means that they either inhibit the overgrowth of microorganisms or they actually directly kill the microorganisms. This is very important to understand because certain finishes may be more specific to specific organisms over others and if your intent is to choose an antimicrobial finish thinking you're going to get a broad spectrum effect the chances are you're not going to see that because most finishes i've come across are far more effective for different types of bacteria or different types of fungi and if your goal is to seek say an antiviral finish you may not achieve that function so understanding which finishes serve which function and which claims they can make is absolutely essential so that you choose the right one for your needs and lastly, and I just alluded to this a moment ago, is whether or not those finishes are specifically antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. Absolutely essential to understand because we all have our different intents when we seek out antimicrobial finishes and recognizing the role that each finish can play is very specific and it's also not well studied at this point in time so that there are differences between studies that are done in a laboratory versus what we call in vivo or actually on your skin. I have not come across a lot of in vivo studies and the ones that I have come across give highly variable and actually somewhat surprising results that sometimes when those products are interacting with your skin, it's an entirely different ballgame as to whether or not they may work as well as you thought they would. Also bearing in mind that moisture from sweat can impact the ability of these finishes to work for better. If you look at my blog, I have a full table of the available data I've come across with regards to specific finishes and the studies that relate to them with antibacterials, antifungal, and antiviral properties. If you look at my blog, I have a full table. However, just broadly speaking, let's go over sort of the classes of antimicrobials that might be added and how they work. The first category would be nanoparticles. Nanoparticles we touched on a bit when we talked about flame retardants. Just like with flame retardants, they can be embedded into the textile itself or coated on the surface of these textiles. 
Now nanoparticles, when it comes to antimicrobial finishes, are meant to be directly toxic to microbes that are out there without damaging skin cells directly. The most common nanoparticle finish I've come across when it comes to antimicrobial textiles available commercially would be silver as a nano finish. However, there's a variety of other metals out there such as titanium, zinc, gold, copper. All of these have been embedded into textiles to serve the same function. Sometimes there can be curcumin or honey even used as a finish. There are natural dyes that have been used to reduce the tendency for bacteria and other organisms to overgrow. There are a variety of dermatologic conditions that are associated with what I refer to as a dysbiosis, which is a disruption of your natural skin's biome that can result in various conditions or disease producing states. Let's go through this list because it's really important. There's not a lot of studies for each of these conditions. However, there's a lot of potential when it comes to antimicrobial textiles and each of these conditions. The first one up would be atopic dermatitis. Atopic dermatitis has been shown to be linked to staphylococcus on our skin and the sensitivity to the bacteria being present. We actually do have some small studies with regards to zinc embedded into textiles as a nanoparticle that has been shown to reduce disease severity in atopic dermatitis patients as well as decreasing some of the symptoms that go with atopic dermatitis. Zinc embedded textiles have actually also been shown in some of these smaller studies to improve some of the parameters that we judge our atopic dermatitis patients by, which would be the disease severity, how extensive it is, the intensity of the pruritus or itching that they're experiencing, and quality of life measures such as the ability to sleep easily. That it actually has been shown in some studies that the antimicrobial finishes used on certain textiles did decrease the inflammatory causing potential of bacteria that embed into our textiles from impacting our skin. Now I came across studies that supported zinc embedded into textiles as well as silver embedded into textiles to serve this purpose. I actually came across a study with regards to chivacin embedded into pajamas also shown to decrease disease severity when it came to atopic dermatitis. This is an exciting field and it's worthy of further research and actually served to help a lot of patients that struggle with a very frustrating group of symptoms that they deal. I touched on this briefly earlier in the video. However, healthcare associated infections are a very important use of antimicrobial finishes, especially in uniforms of healthcare workers, as well as bed linens, curtains, other types of fomites that can be in a healthcare environment and serve to transmit disease. There was a small study done that showed that copper impregnated textiles actually reduced the number of initiations for antibiotics in a hospital setting, reduced the number of days that patients experienced fever in the hospital, and it actually reduced antibiotic usage in ventilator-dependent patients. It's a very big deal because if you consider the fact that there's another way to address some of these microbes in the hospital environment that don't require direct use of antibiotics, the hope or goal would be to reduce the resistance that we see developing to antibiotics over time. When I started studying antimicrobial finishes, I falsely assumed that there must be tons of studies out there on fungal infections and antifungal treated textiles but surprisingly there isn't. So let's go over what is available and what we could actually learn from this. Dermatophytosis is actually fungal infections of the skin, the most common of which we come across would be neopetus, also known as athlete's foot, or tinea chorus, also known as jock itch. The other thing that I always wanna point out is yeast infections in women. The thought behind putting antimicrobials in specific types of textiles, say for socks and undergarments, could serve a purpose to reduce the overgrowth of yeast and bacteria in these regions from causing disease. Now I'm hoping there will be more data and more studies with regards to several other skin conditions that we do know that the skin's biome plays a significant role in impacting, such as seborrheic dermatitis, rosacea as it relates to demodex, which is a mite that can live on the skin, acne as well as alopecia or hair loss, psoriasis and yeast infections that I just alluded to. All of these areas are not well studied with regards to antimicrobial textiles. These are areas of active research that can be really exciting to start to address certain skin disease. Now, when it comes to viruses and textiles, as you can imagine, there's been a lot of research performed in the last few years with regards to this. 
this is really challenging because we do know there's a variety of viruses that can be transmitted in our clothing items, whether it be human papilloma virus, luscum virus, herpes virus, even polio and vaccinia virus have been shown to survive on textiles. And of course, influenza and coronavirus. The challenge that most of the studies I came across when it came to embedding antiviral components into textiles is that they just didn't seem to last in the textile long enough to produce an effectiveness that was worthy of consideration of using them routinely in textiles. In other words, what we would assume to be the antiviral function of those elements embedded in the textiles didn't seem to retain that antiviral capacity for long enough to put them into traditional use. So this is another area for further study down the road. This world of antimicrobial finishes is very exciting because it can serve a very important role, especially in certain environments or climates. However, the challenge that I give to my patients there was understanding the role that they're meant to play and also recognizing that even though you might start to come across lots of clothing items that actually say they're antimicrobial, it's hard to say if the routine use of, say, workout clothing is necessary to have it in there. It hasn't been shown to be as effective as we think for reducing odor. However, it's something to consider for certain types of clothing items that may not be routinely washed, such as outerwear. However, clothing that's in direct contact with your skin Washing, laundering effectively is still an important way to maintain your garments in the best shape possible. And there's a good chance that there is a finish used that's antimicrobial as far as those garments go. It's not going to last necessarily for a lifetime in those clothing items. It's probably going to be washed out at some point and not always worth use. My other worry when it comes to these types of textiles is recognizing there is a role for them, that there are lots of questions when it comes to repurposing and recycling these textiles that we need to be very mindful of for the whole life cycle of a garment when it comes to the environment afterwards.